But we have a um, saying around here, um, uh, teamwork make the dream work. in the room, me and Coach Slaughter was in the back and Coach Nick was over here. And, and we do these things all the time and you see guys with their heads down, guys not paying attention. You guys were very engaged. Um, it just was good to see. But just have to be a role model, you know, every day. Um, I'm a reflection of them no matter if I'm in the school, outside of school. So those things are very important. You know, they don't want to wake up in the morning and see me on TV doing something I shouldn't have been doing. So it's just you know, all day, every day, it's just me being a role model. He is a wonderful individual. He's been the coach of the basketball team, I think, since 2004. He's a very good role model for our students. He's doing a wonderful job, and he has many jobs to do. I think he's superior in all of them. As the leader of the school in terms of the dean, uh, the teachers and, and uh, students as well have a lot of respect for him. He does that job well. In terms of coaching, I don't think there's another at this time that could replace him. I think he is indeed very unique and very accomplished and he works hard and we all appreciate it. And we hope we don't lose him anytime soon. <laughs> A man, a mentor, a father figure for many of the young men, uh, and his role doubles as the dean of students. So uh, he has an opportunity to uh, interact with all of the student body in one capacity or other. And uh, him as basketball coach is just phenomenal the things he's been able to accomplish over the years. It's, I think today it's a very wholesome, very uh, respectful, and a very uh, good relationship. I think uh, we often say that we need them and they need us. And so from that perspective, not only has our personal relationship grown immensely, our competitive and our strategic relationships have equally grown. We're in Leclerc Courts um, at the park, Leclerc Hurst Park. Uh, this is where all my basketball and baseball and wrestling and football dreams started at, right here at this park. Uh, this is where I spent 85% of my time at, you know, growing up as a child. So, beat Larry Bird. You make it, you get one point, you miss, Larry Bird get two. You play up to six points. Now the program, it, it originated at uh, Chicago State when Michael Jordan first got drafted by the Bulls. And then uh, five years after that, they transitioned to LeClaire Court and played here at, at LeClaire Park, which was huge for our community as well because a lot of people were able to come see guys who were professional athletes and who they wouldn't be able to go see at you know, going to the Bulls games or anything like that. So that was a great time for the community. And myself, I had the luxury of being able to keep the 24 second shot clock and keep the clock and the book for those games. So it was great getting, being able to see those guys at a young age and then being around those guys and being able to see what they were doing and see how basketball was really being played. And I think that's when I really started to fall in love with the game was, was being around that, you know, being around those guys, listening to them in the huddles and all those type of things. So it was, it was really huge for our community and myself. I think that's kind of how I really gravitated to loving basketball, and I think that's where it started off. All my friends, we all came here uh, all the time and played, but the guy, Ron McKee, was, was the most, you know, person that was in my life at that time who saw some stuff in me that I probably didn't see in myself. And then uh, Harold German was the, the park supervisor who was also uh, the person who came. He, he was the only person to come get me when I was on punishment to still be able to come to the park and participate. My mother trusted him, you know, enough to make sure I got to the park and then got right home, you know, uh, on those days. Uh, I still come to the community a lot. Um, 
recently I was just at the school, uh, at my elementary school about two weeks ago and dropped off some shoes to some kids who had some good grades on their progress support. I also came to the park and gave some shoes to some kids who uh, come to the park all the time and spend time there. So just still giving back to the community is something that I learned, you know, when I was growing up. So still giving back, even though that I'm away, I just don't want them to think I forgot about where I came from. Well, we had the flat court. It was all back here from 43rd and Cicero to 44th and Cicero, from 43rd all the way down from 44th to uh, the fourth was the last street that the project came down on 44th and 44th. So we all was over there, spent a lot of hours in the, over there as well, you know, especially in the summertime is where everybody was at. Uh, we unfortunately, we lived over here in the home, so we was kind of battling. They kind of thought we thought we were better than them because we lived in a house and they lived in projects. But when, whenever you ask me or any of my friends, we always say we're from the flat court. Even though we didn't physically live inside of the flat court, we still say that we're from the flat court. Starting with Coach Hambrick, uh, which is a who, he's a legend. He taught Coach Smith how to be successful at this level, and uh, we've been jamming ever since. When he called and said that he was retiring and um, he he was gonna hand the program over to me, it was like wow, you know, uh, this program here has been on top for many many years, and just to be able to be the one who steps in the limelight, you know, had a lot of people who didn't think I was gonna be able to do the things he did or take it or keep it to the place it was at the time I was young so they figured why well, this young guy coming in and you know but I put a staff together and we was able to be successful and take it to the next level. Uh, Rob really looks up to him. He, he really looked up to him. He was very important and with his program now it's a lot of things that he still implements that Coach Hamburg implemented when he was the coach. So that, that's a very important part of his coaching career, Coach Hamburg. Um, Coach Hamburg was a little difficult by me just growing up with, with just my mom and finally having a father figure in front of me was a little rough. You know, while I was here, to f probably like the first three years, just not understanding what he was trying to do to me and my teammates, and that was make us men. You know, um, my first three years, I just thought he was this old, mean man, you know, but he was trying to make me become the be a man, and I didn't understand it at the time. So after I left from here and, and went to college, that's when it became more on what he was doing for me. You know, I was always on time to places. I was always doing things right. I was in the right places. I worked hard. And, and other people was able to see that and they was trying to figure out where did it come from. And at the time, I really didn't know where it came from either, but it was him, you know, making sure and instilling to me that you had to be places on time. You had to do things right. So and you got to work hard. So it was, it was great, you know. Uh, so he's really like my father, you know, he was the person that had a lot of time to spend with me from my childhood all the way to I was adult, so he, he, he's pretty much like, he was like my father. Mm -hmm. I'm free and open with, with how I grew up, I'm free and open with, you know, my father not being around and uh, my mother and grandmother passed and I'm free and open with all those things so I can relate to everything that they have and I, it's not a secret on how I, was, how I grew up, you know, and they need to understand that and that I try to show them that that didn't hold me back from being who I am today. Every player is, you know, allowed to walk in his office, talk about no matter what it is, school, um, basketball, life, you know, um, advice. So, I mean, like, I feel like he has an amazing relationship with every player on the team because, like, um, we hit with him. We actually were with him more than we were with our parents because when we play basketball, we travel, we go to school here, sometimes we got night practices. So I mean, we were with him a lot, so we've been able to talk to him, it's real easy. I think that I don't think he would take it on. Rob is a mentor, Rob is a principal, Rob is a teacher, <laughs> Rob is a security officer, Rob is a lunch technician, Rob is an assistant principal. Rob is really everything rolled up in one. Uh, Dean first. Um, just like the students uh, who play basketball, they're student athletes, so I'm a Dean first. Although we have the best 
athletic programs, we push academics first. And I think that makes a big difference when you're saying that you have a school of champions. Because it doesn't make sense to have champions when your athletes can't go to college. And he's all about grades. He preaches about grades every single day. You know, uh, it's not one time that he ends the practice without. Make sure you're getting yourself in those books. You know, he's all about the grades. You know, he, he, God first, family second, grades, and then basketball. So basketball is number four in his books. As the basketball coach, I think he's a legend in his own time. We have accomplished so many feats with uh, under the guidance of Robert Smith. Uh, the, the gentlemen on the teams work so hard. They practice diligently. They're aware that they need to maintain good grades in order to participate. And so, of course, that makes me very happy also. <laughs> like, if I see him in the hallways, it's just, man, you paying attention to class, man, what you learn today, just, it's not all about basketball with him. It's just about, you know, life after basketball and becoming a young man. Just being firm with them and, and, and keeping with that is, is very huge. And after a while, at the beginning, they don't understand. But later on, they will later, you know, in life and they understand what you were trying to do for them. He's so focused and, and that's, I think, what separates Coach Smith is his ability to, uh, to focus and his, uh, his discipline that he has with the student body as well as with his athletes. Uh, well, I'll probably have to say from like day one is just discipline. I think it's the discipline. I think the discipline, it, it, it goes from the basketball court onto the, to the, the world. Well, it was started before me, and Coach Hamrick, the coach before me, started, and I just kept it going on, his legacy. Uh, and, and it starts from discipline. You know, we all have to be disciplined, the students have to be disciplined, the players have to be disciplined. So, um, me being in this role as disciplinarian, and it didn't really helped. You know, but just just the guys being disciplined and being focused and understand where they're trying to get to in life and not just, you know, just basketball because um, a lot of times they don't get a chance. Everybody's not going to make it. So what are you going to do after that? And we talk a lot about, you know, what's going to happen after the ball starts bouncing. <laughs> Head coach. I've been a head coach. This should be my eighth year at Morgan Park, and that's when the battle started. You know, we're in the same conference, and you know, uh, you know, when I first started coaching, everybody said Simeon is the team to beat, and I'm like, no, nah, we the team to beat. So, you know, it, it's just a little, little friendly little thing going on. But you know, uh, to be the best, you had to beat the best. So, that, that, and that's what my main objective was. My biggest rapper right now is Morgan Park. Um, Coach Irvin is, is doing a great job over in Morgan Park. He's been there for five or six years, and they challenge us every year for the conference championship, and a lot of our kids play AAU for him uh, with the Mac Irvin Fire, so it, it's a lot going on with, with him knowing the kids and the kids knowing him, and he wanting to beat the kids, and, and, and our kids want to beat them, so that's our biggest rivalry right now. He's doing a fantastic job. I think he got six state championships, uh, working on the seventh, which he, 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 he should get. And Simeon always been one of our rivalries. And for me, um, as a player and as a coach, so when I see them on the on the uh, schedule, my eyes light up. I know it's going to be a great game because he's a great coach. And I know it's going to be a chess match. And I, I really look I look forward to that. Well, I think when you talk about beating uh, Coach Smith and Simeon, the very first thing we do is we pray. And we pray a lot because uh, Coach Smith has done a phenomenal job, not just coaching his program, program but also building it and, and keeping it at a, at a certain level. And, and they, they've been very good over the years. They've had some phenomenal players, and, you know, and, and, and Coach Smith does an outstanding job of putting that collaboration of players together. So it's always competitive. One of the things that we talk about with our guys really is about us doing the very best job that we can do doing what we do. And if that's not good enough, then ultimately we're not going to win. But if it's good enough and we are good enough at what we do, we're going to be successful. You know, it, it's nothing to accept it but winning, you know, and that's the way I've been uh, growing up as a kid when we played Simeon when I played basketball. Simeon always been one of our rivalries and for me uh, as a player and as a coach, so when I see them on the, on the uh, schedule, my eyes light up. I know it's going to be a great game because he's a great coach and 
But you know, anytime we play Simeon and have an opportunity to play against Coach uh, Smith, it's, it's it's competitive. It's fun. I mean, like I said, we're friends, but. Uh, we, we joke about it, we laugh about it, but I want to kill him and he wants to kill me and when the game is over I'll call him after he's beaten me and, and we'll joke about this or that or he'll call me after I've beaten him and we'll laugh and I'll support him if, if it's a move on game for him and he's the same with me. Because again, at the end of the day, it's really about our kids, it's about our programs doing well and about us having a good wholesome relationship. Because you know, when you're comfortable and and you love helping kids, that 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 makes your decision that much harder and that much tougher. And so I think that's that's you can say that, but and also he, he deserved to go to college. I mean, what more he have to prove on this level is coaching. You know, he got six state championships, he got city championships. I mean, what's more, what's more can he accomplish? Uh, hopefully, my. Uh, career and transition to coaching uh, college basketball. I, I would love to have that opportunity to go to the next level and, and coach college basketball, but the situation has to be the right situation. Uh, I have a great situation here at Simeon. You know, I think it's one of the best high school jobs in the country. You know, so to make that move would have to be the best um, situation for me and my family. We feel as if, if we're on our best, then we can't be beat. So, I mean, I feel like that's that's real big, so he, he got confidence in the players and what he does, so I feel like it, it can go on to any level of my, in my opinion. What he done in the city and what he done for high school basketball, I mean, Rob should be in high school coaching. He should be on the college level and getting his opportunity that he deserves because he put in the work and the time and effort. And for him not to, you know, be in college right now is a travesty, I think. But it also helping kids right now, he mentoring them and you know, helping them make it in life. So it was still a win-win situation for him, but I think he should be into college. Rob loves high school. Um, he loves being in control of his own program. And although I believe he wants to coach college or maybe even go further, um, I just believe that his heart is with um, the youth in Chicago. I believe he's really more concerned with helping as many young lives that he can here opposed to on a higher level. Well, it's the kids, you know. Uh, it's giving back, uh, having an opportunity to take some young men and help them become B-man is huge, you know, uh, for giving back. Uh, someone did that for me and helped me become successful. So it, it's just dear and near to my heart to, to do the same thing. Tradition is rich here. So Rob coming back here was just not to be a coach. It was just not to work. I believe Rob came back because Simeon was awesome and great to him. And I think he sees a lot of children that they remind Rob of himself. And I think that he sees a level of responsibility to Simeon and to the children but I also think that he has an expectation. And that expectation is he wants Simeon to be the number one school in the country. And that's just not in sports. He <laughs> wants Simeon to be the number one school for everything that we do. Everything he say, you listen, you know, 10 times harder because you know he's, he's coached people that have been able to play at the highest level of basketball. So he obviously knows what he's talking about. And, you know, it starts young, so when you teach them how to, you know, lay the ball up correctly, just make the smart plays and not try to showboat or anything like that. So you try to listen to everything you say 10 times more than you would to anybody else. I think if you go back to that day, what you had were two teams that were uh, by distance no more than two miles apart. The, the students that attend both schools live in the same neighborhoods. Uh, so they have pride in their both institutions. You have two coaches that have tremendous pride, tremendous uh, confidence in what they can do, and they play a game and one team wins and one team loses. The natural response, no matter what we coach and talk about, is that the, the, the energies are going to be high in the game itself. It happens all over the country. It, it's, 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 it's par for the course. Now, the, the, the events that happen after the game, outside of the game, they were found to have had nothing to do with the game itself. The game on the court, you know, uh, the young man and whoever the other people were uh, started in their neighborhood and then they just saw each other at the game. So I think the media kind of you know, blew it 
up, you know, out of proportion and make it more than what it was. So, um, you know, that, that's part of the territory. You know, um, our kids were fine. You know, uh, their kids were fine. Unfortunately, someone had to be killed uh, out of this. But um, the, the media just, I think they took it a little bit overboard. Yeah, um, well, I don't, the punishment, I, don't, I never thought it was right. You know, I, I think it was just a misunderstanding and, you know, and, you know, just a rivalry team going at it and, and, and wanting to win. You know, it, it, it wasn't no punches thrown. It, it, it wasn't, you know, to a severe where, you, you know, you get a four-game suspension, but we took it like a man. I don't think it was fair on either one of our parts because what happened outside had nothing to do with what happened on the court, you know. But you know that's how things go, and we just took the suspension in stride and moved on, and, and we both ended up being winning the state championship afterwards. So uh, it, it's part of life, you know. Uh, we both talked to our student athletes about it, you know, uh, about the situation when we both got suspended, and of course they didn't think it was fair because they knew it didn't have anything to do with us. But we just let them know that that's that's part of life, you know, and it's a, a growing process. Well, I think they did it because it was two high-profile coaches and two high-profile programs, and, you know, they had to start somewhere and put punishment somewhere. So they said, hey, why not start with them two, you know? And, and I get it. I understood it. But at the same time, you know, the kids asking why, you know, why they do that to, to your own. And, and like I explained to them, I said, life ain't fair. I said, so you got to live, live your life to the fullest. And, be cognizant for what you do in life. That was tough. Uh, being an assistant coach, the, the, you got to think about the players, how they're going to respond to seeing their coach, the head coach, not being being able to coach them for four games. So that was a, the biggest concern of mine. Uh, after the first game, I seen that they they didn't lose focus. It was a breeze. I knew that Coach Smith taught me how to step in for him in, in those situations. Well, we had some really good kids. I think it opened their eyes up a little bit more about, you know, who they really are, you know, um, and, and don't take things for granted. You know, they're, they're, they're superstars, you know, and, and they need to understand that. So uh, I think that kind of just opened their eyes up a little bit more who they really are. And everybody thought, you know, we hate each other, we don't like each other, we don't get along. It, it wasn't never that, you know. Me and Rob always been friends, we're going to continue to be friends. I called him, talked to him, he called me, you know, like he called me getting the elite class and I said, I'm in. You know, it wasn't no hesitation when I called him for things, it ain't no hesitation. And, and we talked about many on, on many occasions where we need to get out into the streets. We need to, you know, try to help mentor these kids and help stop some violence out here. And, and and that's what we're going to try to do. And a lot of, a lot of people blew it out of proportion. I, I don't understand why. The relationship is great. You know, we've always been friends. We're, we're real good competitors. I mean, we, we want we compete against each other every time we step across those lines against each other. And that's, that's most of the guys that we coach against. I'm not really sure. I'm, I'm not. There can be times where it's blown out of proportion. And then there can be times when I just feel like he's not recognized enough. Um, j just how we talked about the mentoring thing and touching so many lives. I don't think they focus enough on that. I think it's sometimes a lot of negativity that can be thrown in, on the back burner. I just feel like um, they don't really know him. Um, they know who he appears to be when he's on the court, but it's a lot more to him than the coach Rob that coaches those children. I mean, we cannot be as coaches held accountable for our players, our fans, and our communities. We can try to impact all of those, but we can't be held accountable for them. And so when you look at that, I think it, it, it not only gave those institutions a very bad look, but it, it, more importantly, it, it, it denigrated two coaches who have had tremendous success and who graduate their players, who send their players to college, and now they will forever be a, attached to a, a, a senseless murder. It had nothing to do with them. 
It was a basketball game. It just happened to be, you know, the, the impetus by which this took place. So I think that when you go back and you look at it, we want our kids to compete. We want our kids to compete hard. Do our emotions sometimes get the best of us? Without question, they do. But they get the best of us in the boardrooms, too. They get the best of us in, in everyday life. And, and, and it, it does the punishment fit the crime. And I think that the punishment in that venue clearly did not fit the crime because in, reaction, in reality, there was really no crime. There were two coaches who had words, which happens all the time, all over the world. Does it make it right? No, it doesn't make it right, but it is something that goes on. There's a different way to handle it. I think the event turned out well. Um, had some great speakers. The kids was really engaged into the to the program today. Uh, it was something very different. No basketball, just about life. You know, everything was simply about life and life after basketball. So I thought it was a great event. Um, looking for another one event like this coming up soon, but I think this was a success. What does that mean to you that he's a mentor for so many young men in his community? It means a lot to me. Um. Um, well, you know, for years, I didn't quite understand. Um, it was boggling to me how someone could put so much into uh, people and for them to be ungrateful or unappreciative. And so we would have our issues um, because I would just say, you do all of this for people and they don't even care. Their parents don't care. And so um, I finally got it, you know. Um, I realized that's his calling. And so for him to help so many young boys, take them off the streets, Sometimes get up in the middle of the night to take phone calls, uh, run to jails at times. It's, it's set with me and I understood that this is what he has to do. And the biggest reward is how he feels. And it's nothing anyone could ever do for him or say to him to stop him from helping people. So. For him to be a mentor to so many people, it is, it's wonderful to me now. At first, I was furious about it, but now it's wonderful. And so the arguments slow down, you know, and then it's not like it's taking anything from our children. They have everything they need here, so it, it's well. It's huge, you know. Um, one thing about it is my wife um, loves basketball, and my kids love basketball, and they grew up on it. So that, that's why they're so much in love with it, just like I am. But it's making sure that you divide the two, you know. Um, I, I spend my hours at home with my family. I give my wife her space to, to be by herself while I take the kids and, and do things with them outside of basketball. Uh, sometimes I had him come to practice just to be around it and, and let her have some free time because I don't want to just burden her with the kids all the time while I'm just doing basketball. In the off season, I spend a lot of time with, with them. You know, as a whole, we do a lot of things. Uh, today, we, yesterday, we went down as a family and watched uh, the Cavs play the Bucks in Milwaukee. And then I drove back home and came to practice. So just doing those little bitty things before the season get really started is real important you know, for me to, to make sure my wife and, and kids understand they're a big part of, of what's going on with me. Um, so for the most part, if he's doing something that's just like downstate, um, Honeyad, something close, the kids and I will go, along with um, a couple of the other wives and their children. As for out of town, which is like five or six trips, maybe a season, I'll try to make one. Um, but then, of course, we don't both want to miss time with the children. So I'll have like my aunt or my mother come over here uh, a couple of those weekends and just help me out and, you know, make sure I'm able to get out and get some me time without being overwhelmed and frustrated with him being gone. 
when he was born, you know, everybody just assumed he was going to be a basketball player, and that was not my vision of him being, you know. Um, I didn't want to force anything on him. I wanted him to be able to make his own choice and be his own man. Uh, I guess just being around me and, and watching basketball all the time and watching family with me and watching games, he just started to love it. You know, it, it's something that he does every single day, all day. He, he watches, he knows. You know, and it's, it's kind of funny watching him grow up to understand what's going on at a young age. So uh, it, it's kind of scary. It's mm -hmm. kind of scary that he understands so much at, at, at his age. Is that a trick question? <laughs> it's, it would amaze you how um, a three-year-old can be so interested in basketball, so knowledgeable. Um, he could go to the gym and really like run up and down the court with kids three times his age, four times his age. He loves basketball. Um, she she wants to be you know a school teacher, which is great. But she's around basketball too. She likes it when she comes to practice. She plays when she's here. She's in my camps all the time. So they both just around it. So they figure they just pick it up and and it's something that daddy wants them to do. But. I told both of them, you know, at a young age, my son probably didn't really understand. My daughter understood that you don't have to play basketball if you don't want to. You know, you're not. I'm not gonna be upset with you if you don't play. It's not a big thing. Whatever you want to be or whatever you want to do, I'm gonna support you. You know, so she's now really into this dance thing, and it, that's good. So I support her with the dance. And my son, he pretty much, I think he's gonna be a basketball player, but I'm not gonna force it. I know it's gonna be hard at times to, to just watch you know, from afar, but that's I'm gonna try my best to let him, you know, grow into be uh, the player that he's gonna be. I think Rob's work ethic, I think they speak for themselves. I think when you see that he has probably the most Division One players in Chicago Public Schools, probably some of the highest number of students that go into the league, the highest, I think the greatest winning record I think that says a lot. And I don't, people keep saying, that's because you have the best players. No, it's because we have the best coach. And that best coach then creates the greatest players. And that makes a big difference. Uh, just a, a great history of uh, winning, uh, good character, and guys that are going to play at uh, elite levels of college basketball as well. Well, it, it's basically is taking a group of young men and, and, and making them into one. You know, hard work and dedication, you know, uh, like I said, respecting everyone's game and, and, and just sacrificing it, you know, just sacrificing it. And we talk about sacrificing all the time, you know, the coaching staff, they sacrifice with their families being gone. You know, I sacrifice the same thing, so they have to sacrifice some. And if it's just making an extra pass so someone else can score and sacrifice that, it's huge. So I think it's more making them understand that it's not about them, it's about us. You know, and the result is, is winning, you know, and, and going out there and giving it 110.